Battersea is the UK's most famous dog's home, rehoming dogs for over 150 years. But for breeds banned under the Dangerous Dogs Act, like the Pitbull, there will be no way out. I want to see what it's like on the front line at Battersea, where on average eight pits are being put down every month. Nice to meet you. Good to meet you. My introduction to the centre is with Steve, who manages the intake of all dogs coming into Battersea. So you must see a lot of dogs. Yeah, we see uh, over our three sites nearly 5,000 dogs a year, every year. And what's the outcome with most of those dogs? The vast majority of those dogs, uh, they go through their assessment and they find a loving home somewhere else. It's good. That's the idea. That's, that's our perfect aim. Yeah. Steve takes me to see some of the dogs that have recently been brought in. She's such a gorgeous dog, I can't imagine any, why anyone would give her up. Hopefully these dogs will be lucky enough to find new homes. <laughs> I, think, I think this guy wants to say hello. But for some there is no way out. The law states that if a dog fits a number of key measurements similar to a pit bull and some other fighting type breeds, they must be destroyed. They are known here as section one dogs. Dogs that are identified as being a banned breed under section one of the Dangerous Dogs Act, dogs like the Pitbull Terrier, we are left with no choice, but legally we have to put those dogs to sleep. So there's no option for those dogs? There is no option to be for those dogs, absolutely. That can't be easy for, for the people that have to carry that out, especially if there are no, if there's no health or behavioural issues. No, it's, it's one of the most difficult things we do here because it's hard to see the reason behind it. So how many Section 1 dogs are you seeing? Um, last year we saw 91 Pitbull Terrier types dogs uh, at this site in London alone. Battersea has one of the highest intakes of pit bulls in the country. I've just been told that a stray has been brought in who has characteristics similar to a pit bull. Without a dog tag, staff have named her Caramel. Caramel has days before the police make a decision on whether or not she is a banned breed. I'm meeting Natalie, who's looking after Caramel until then. This is Caramel. Hello, Caramel. Lovely, isn't she? You're lovely, aren't you? Yeah, you are. So what breed is she? We'd like to think that she's just Staffy Cross, but this is the kind of dog that, you know, comes into Battersea, um, and it could go either way. Colour-wise, she looks like she could be a pit bull. So what sort of assessments have you done with Caramel since she's been here? We observe the dogs throughout their stay, so we're assessing them, basically, every day that they're with us. Um, we kind of treat them as if they're our own. <laughs> you know, we, although the vets check them, we'll pretend to have a good look at them. Um, can we do things like check their paws, um, lift their tails up, hold them by the collars? Mm, oh. Yes. Mm, you're a bit special, aren't you? So what have you learned about Caramel's behaviour so far, then? She's quite a sociable dog. You know, you came into the paddock, she wasn't phased at all. She came straight up to you. She was really sociable. and and nice and polite about it as well, you know. She's a really nice dog. And it's quite scary to think that, ultimately, if somebody comes past and looks at her and goes, you're a pit bull, that would be the end. Um, and that's the thing that I think it's really difficult. I hope, I hope she isn't a pit. Because you don't deserve to get put down for nothing, do you? No, you're lovely. You're lovely. Yeah, you are. I feel like I've been kicked in the stomach, so to do Natalie's job or to be the vet that has to put that dog down, I don't know. I mean, going home must be horrible. I'd probably end up crying myself to sleep every night. But weirdly, you know, the dog's been abandoned, yet it had clearly been treated quite well. It played fetch, it sat, gave paw. It was really attentive, really polite as well. It had been taught good manners. And to know that it's now a waiting game, you know, the dog 
it has no idea that its life is just hanging in the balance. And if it's determined that it is a pit bull type, if it fits certain parameters and measurements, then it will be put down, you know, destroyed, killed. Three days later, I'm back to find out Caramel's fate. A police dog legislation officer has assessed her. By taking a number of measurements of her body and head shape, they'll determine if she's a pit. While I wait for the verdict, I'm going to meet Sean Opperman, Battersea's head vet, whose job it is to put down these healthy dogs. I think working in the rescue sector, you know, we have to make a lot of tough decisions, and I accept that because they may be tough decisions, but they've got a rational basis to them. You sort of know why you're doing them, but it seems particularly harsh to have to put to sleep a dog that is in great temperament and good physical health seems, seems nonsensical. And when that's just based on its physical characteristics, uh, all the more ridiculous, really. I don't know, it seems a bit outdated. Well, it is, and it's been... I mean, I've been at Batsy for 25 years. Ironically, I started... As long as the laws were around. Yeah, as long as the laws were around. So none of us, at least all me, ever thought that that law would last that long. So we thought some might come to their senses at some point. Unable to make sense of the law, for now I have to focus on Caramel's case as I head down to hear the verdict of the dog legislation officer. Stephen. I'm Stacey. Nice to meet you. How are you doing? Good, thank you. Yeah, good. How's everything with Caramel? Good, yeah, so far so good. We've had the DLO out to visit, so yeah. someone's come out from Metropolitan Police to view her, and we had some pretty nice news, actually, which is really good to hear. You're joking. <laughs> oh, my God, you know what? My heart was ready to sink. <laughs> I walked in here really, really pensive. I thought no. we were going to... No, she got viewed and she's been deemed not to be a pit bull type at this time. So we can go ahead with her assessment and hopefully get her into a forever home pretty soon now, which is oh, really great. I feel a bit great. better about that. We all do. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good news, so we're all chuffed. Who's happy to be here? Crazy today. Hey. <laughs> Maybe she does have some idea of what's just gone on here. I think she does. She's very, very happy today. <laughs> very bouncy. So, going to go out with some dogs later. Today was a really lucky outcome. You know, I feared the worst. I thought she looked like a pit bull, as did Natalie, who we spoke to when we met Caramel, um, and as did everyone else. And to get here and get the good news, you know, that it wasn't decided that she was to be put to sleep because they don't think she's a pit bull type. Um, she shared some of the characteristics, but not enough of them for them to decide that she had to be put down or killed, um, which is a really, really nice surprise. But that's not the usual outcome. Now, there are a lot of dogs that are deemed to be a pit bull type that do have to be put to sleep. And it just shows how ridiculous the law is. As to whether or not the law is going to be changed, I don't think it will. If the law's changed and a dog that is a banned breed then attacks someone and harms them or worse, the person who changed the law is going to be held accountable. Um, and that's it's going to take a pretty brave person to put a neck on the line for that. That said, I think the law does need to change. I don't think it's working. <laughs> 